It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. More recently, Tim Waltz has been nominated for the Vice President of the United States of America for the campaign of Kalama Harris. Now, for this particular video, I'm going to make an argumentation why exactly is actually a bad idea to have somebody like him in power, and hopefully by the end of the video, I will make my case loud and clear for those who are on the fence. One aspect that I do in fact appreciate of Mr. Walls is the fact that he actually signed into a law free school meals for Minnesota students. It says right here, Governor Tim Walls today signed into law a bill providing free school lunch and breakfast for all Minnesota students at participating schools. The governor and lieutenant governor were joined by legislators, students, and advocates at Webster Elementary in Northeast Minneapolis to celebrate the bill's signing. As a former teacher, I know that providing free breakfast and lunch for our students is one of the best investments we can make to lower costs, support Minnesota's working families, and care for our young learners and the future of our states. This bill puts us one step closer to making Minnesota the best day for students to grow up, and I'm grateful for all the legislators and advocates for making it happen. I'm not necessarily against this particular bill whatsoever, but I have one major nitpick about it. My major nitpick is the fact that they refer to the school lunches as free for that particular legislation. However, nothing in life is free. We all pay for money through tax dollars for firefighters, for police officers, for roads. And also, for this particular case, people are using their tax dollars to pay for the lunches for kids. So, nothing in life is actually truly free unless you die, and that case is actually really free. That being said, I'm in support of that particular legislation largely because I know for a fact that every single circumstance is different for a kid. There are kids who are born in poor families. There are kids that are born in middle class families. There are kids that are born in rich families. And so unfortunately, because of the circumstances, not every single parent is going to afford the meal for the next day once their kids start to attend public school for elementary, middle, and high school. And so I'm not necessarily against this legislation because without food in your body, it's harder for a kid to actually concentrate for classes, be it like English class or math class or whatever kind of classes that we're basically talking about. Another aspect that's also really positive about this particular individual is the fact that he actually legalized marijuana in his state. My personal rationale on why exactly marijuana should be legalized is quite simple. It's largely because every single person that lives on this earth right now has their own personal bodily autonomy. That is to say that a person can actually give consent on what exactly to put in their body or not put in their body and that no one should force them to pick what they can put in their body or not put in their body. That is to say that if somebody want to eat junk food, even though it's not necessarily healthy for them, they still have that right to eat junk food within their body. If somebody want to use drugs like tobacco or marijuana or whatever kind of drugs that they want to, they just have that free choice to actually put whatever they want in their body. So personal bodily autonomy is my main argumentation in favor of the legalization of marijuana. So you're in favor of the lunch program for kids. You're in favor of the legalization for marijuana. And so I guess the question then becomes, well, geez, Tyler, why exactly are you basically against this guy? Let's look at this particular video clip right here on one of the main reasons why I'm really concerned about this guy in power. 
before I ask you another question, I want to talk about what you just mentioned about misinformation. Because oftentimes before, yeah. in previous political chapters, disinformation, telling people where to vote the wrong way, that was kind of, these were called, considered shenanigans. But it's becoming more ominous. Can you talk a little bit about that and what you oh, will yeah. do to ensure that there are penalties for that? Yeah, years ago, it was the little things telling people to vote the day after the election. And, you know, we kind of brushed them off. Now we know it's intimidation at the at the ballot box. Mm -hmm. It's it's undermining the idea that uh, mail in ballots aren't uh, legal. I think we need to push back on this. There, there's no guarantee to free speech on misinformation or or hate speech and especially around our democracy. Tell the truth where the voting places are, who can vote, who's able to be there. And I, uh, you know, watching some states uh, continue to weaken the protections around the ballot, I think, is what inspiring us to to lean into this. When he said that information or misinformation should be actually dictated by the state, that got me incredibly concerned about his position, about the whole entire issue about free speech. Obviously, I'm in favor of free speech, and the only exception to the limitation for the case of free speech would be libel, defamation, and also death threats. But outside of those particular limitations, I'm in favor of things that people find offensive or not offensive. The whole purpose to actually, you know, for the case of free speech is to allow people to speak their mind. Now, the foundation of this particular country was largely inspired by the ideas of a guy named John Locke. Now, John Locke made this particular argumentation that everybody has this birthright for the issue of speech. That is to say that speech itself is not necessarily dictated about the government. Speech itself is something that we're born with. Also, in terms of the law, he is also just wrong because it says right here that there is no hate speech exception to the First Amendment. The idea that the government may restrict speech expressing ideas that offend strikes at the heart of the First Amendment. Speech that demeans on the basis of race, ethnicity, gender, religion, age, disability, or any other similar ground is hateful. But the proudest boost of our free speech peers students is that we protect the freedom to express the thought that we hate. Yes, we need to talk about the Black Lives Matter riots during the whole entire year of 2020 when Black Lives Matter protesters went out their way to riot in the state of Minnesota, he did not do a damn thing about that until three days later. He did not actually, of course, call for like, you know, any sort of police officers or assistants to actually settle down the situation. He allowed these kind of people in that particular state to burn anything and I do mean anything in their way. It is so ironic to me that the organization, they call themselves Black Lives Matter. But at the same time, apparently they want black jobs and also make sure that their black lives actually matter. But by destroying the businesses, it's telling them that they don't necessarily care about black lives because if they did, they would not make sure that black people in that particular state will not get any type of jobs whatsoever, but I digress. What's also really curious about the whole entire case about what occurred in Minnesota is the fact that when he was actually still in office, he appointed somebody that was known as a laser Doris. Now, this particular individual was actually part of something that was known as the Minnesota Freedom Fund. And that particular organization was the same organization that Kalama Harris used to actually have people donate towards that particular fund. And the sad part about the whole entire scenario was that there was actually a rapist that got freed thanks to that particular fund. 
This is life affirming and life saving health care. When our children tell us who they are, it is our job as grown ups to listen and to believe them. That's what it means to be a good parent. For those who are curious about the woman in the video, it's actually the assistance of Mr. Walls. Her name is Lieutenant Flanagan. And yes, she was making the argumentation that if a kid someday says that they're basically transgender, we ought to believe the kid if the kid says that the kid is transgender. I wish I was joking. And not just that, though, but apparently he also signed some sort of law that would allow tampons in the boys' bathrooms, even though boys don't necessarily have periods, but I digress. My final example of this lunacy comes directly from a legislation that he actually signed into law. It says right here, a bill for an act relating to human rights, removing certain subsections in the Human Rights Act that allow for discrimination based upon sexual orientation. Gender identity. Gender identity means a person's inherent sense of being a man, woman, both, or neither. A person's gender identity may or may not correspond to their assigned sex at birth, or to their primary or secondary sex characteristics. A person's identity is not necessarily visible to others. Sexual orientation means having or being perceived as having emotional, physical, or sexual attachment to another person without regard to the sex of that person, or having perceived as having an orientation of such attraction. Now, the following sections are the parts that he actually cross out. And I'm going to read this out loud for you guys to actually understand what exactly I'm saying. Sexual orientation does not include a physical or sexual attraction to children by adults. Yes, guys. He basically crossed out this particular section and making it sure that pedophiles are covered underneath sexual orientation. What is so crazy about this particular bill is that many organizations openly support it. This comes directly from the Minnesota Council of Nonprofits. They're members of the Senate and Public Safety Committee. The Minnesota Council of Nonprofits is the largest statewide association of nonprofits in the country, representing over 2,300 members, organizations across the state. Through MCN, nonprofits join together across interest areas to work on issues of common interest to all. MCN works to inform, promote, connect, and strengthen individual nonprofits in the nonprofit sector. We are writing today in support of SF1886. This again comes directly from the National Council of Jewish Women. As Executive Director of the National Council of Jewish Women Minnesota, I write to express our support for H. F1655 the Take Pride Act. Here's like another example that we have right here directly from the Girl Scouts. Thank you for the opportunity to submit written comments in support of HF1655 SF1886. It's not put equity and inclusion at the center of it is certainly going to uh, eventually uh, come to the places where we're at. Uh, this is a moment of inflection. It's a moment of real change. It's a moment that those folks who are out there demanding this are, are not going to take a, a commission or a report. Um, they're going to want fundamental change. And, and that is what I think uh, 
that's one of the exciting things in the midst of all this. You can feel a sense of optimism coming back. Just like with the case of Kalama Harris, he is also in favor of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Now, my argumentation against such notion is the fact that when people like him and Kalama Harris define equity where somebody must actually be there at the exact same place like somebody else for the absolute outcome. Basically, what I would say is that it basically ignores the fact that not everybody has the exact same interests. So if somebody like me want to have a different career path than somebody else and vice versa, that will mean that we have their own personal decision about the career path that they want. But under the ideas of diversity, equity, and inclusion, they basically want to force other people to have jobs that are not necessarily interested. Not to mention the fact, the notion, that when it comes down to the earnings, like you cannot have the exact same outcome for earnings because essentially everybody worked different hours. It's done. <laughs> A packed room at the St. Paul Armory erupted after the governor's signature made driver's license for all the law of the land. When he allowed illegal immigrants to actually have driver's license, it shows to me that he doesn't necessarily care about natural sovereignty. I think when it comes down to immigration, I'm not necessarily against immigrants coming for their country to come to this country. And the main reason why I'm saying that is largely there are cases where some immigrants are legit asylum seekers. And so sometimes immigrants with those particular places do in fact need our help. Or sometimes they're like in dire situations and that's why they want to immigrate to our country. I'm not necessarily against immigration. But on the flip side, there are of course some people that want to come to the country, that want to commit crime, and so we cannot necessarily ignore that either. And so I would say that when it comes down to sovereignty, that basically I would say that illegals are illegal in our country by law, and because they're not necessarily meant to be there in the first place, that will mean we need to treat such people as guests. When we say that illegals should actually vote in the elections, when we say that illegals should also have licenses to drive, we're basically saying that anybody, no matter where they're coming from, should be here without any sort of process. It spits in the face of the legal immigrants that actually came to this country, and of course, it spits on the citizens that were born here. And so I don't think it's fair for illegal immigrants to have a license and to vote in this particular country. So to recap everything, I think he doesn't necessarily care about the case about natural sovereignty, and I don't think he's actually a leader when it came down to the whole entire BLM riots that we just saw earlier in the video. Now, I have noted, and quite well actually, that the Democratic Party, more or less, is the party of woke. Don't believe me? Let's hear the horse's mouth about the particular issue. We have to stay woke. Like, everybody needs to be woke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and you can talk about if you're the wokest or woker, but just stay more woke than less woke. <laughs> yeah. You know what woke means? It means you're a loser. Everything woke. Everything woke. It's true. Everything woke turns to shit, okay? It's true. Look at what's happening. As you guys can clearly see right here, I'm not the one saying that the Democrats are the party of woke. <laughs> Kalama Harris herself is saying that the Democrats is the party of woke. And so I'm not just saying that to just say that, I'm saying that because she said that. <laughs> but what do you guys think about this issue? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I won't trade him for another black friend.
Because black friends are rare as you should be aware He smiles like Richard Pryor so just sit and stare It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler